This is what we're going for. Isn't that cool? This, um, I wanted to hide all the blemishes and all the impurities and the, and the weirdness of what happened to that poor drawer after I took the veneer off. And please stop, Charlie. She wants to go outside. No, Charlie. So what happened was I decided that I was going to use a stamping technique. Now, many of you may have seen a stenciling technique, but IOD sells the most gorgeous stamps that I decided I'm going to use one of these stamps. And I needed it to be somewhat thick on the top of that so that it would cover everything. Hello, Lillian from Florida and Linda and Diane and Charlotte from Delaware. Thanks for joining me. My name is Jenny from Worthy Treasures. I'm in Geneseo, Illinois today. So um, isn't that cool? So not only did it take care of all those little divots and blemishes that were on that poor little drawer from over the years, um, but it also made it kind of an architectural design. So something different. So I'll repeat, because some people are just coming in. See how the drawer looks? I gotta get it a certain way in the light. But it's just not something I'd be proud to put my stamp on. I could have sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded, um, but what probably would have happened is I would have lost my architectural design that's cut out here. So I didn't want to lose that, and then what would I do with it? So I, I wanted to completely give it a makeover, okay? It's a, big, it's a vanity. It needed a makeover, just like it's going to allow you when you sit at it to get pretty. So anyway, I'm getting rid of those little blemishes and things. Um, we had to strip the veneer off of it, but the drawers are super solid. You can see their dovetail. I went ahead and I painted the sides because they were just so brown and, and dirty looking and I tried cleaning them up and, and they just, I don't know, sometimes the old drawers, there's just not a lot you can do to it. So we're gonna make these beautiful as well. So to prep my piece, what I did was I took, whoops, wrong piece. I took my drawer and I had to put, to get the veneer off, I'm looking at a race stencil for a piece, I'm, I'm, but I think maybe this might be a better idea. This is super simple. Um, the stencils are super simple too, but I just can't pass up some of the designs. We're gonna use a Bohemia um, stamp today, and this is the pattern that we're using. Now, the one thing I'll suggest is that you're going to, if you're having a piece that's all bumpy like this, you want a pattern, number one, that pretty much fits over the surface, okay? And number two, it wasn't hard at all to flip this and do the other part. But you also want a stencil that has a lot of pattern to it. You don't want a lot of empty space because if you have a lot of that empty space, you're gonna kind of still see some of those impurities, okay? So when I show you the process, you might understand a little more what I'm talking about. But I chose this part because it was just an all over design, nothing very specific. A little bit florally, a little bit architectural, so I liked this, and it actually fit on there perfect. Now, if you look through our line of IOD stamps, there are so many that will work for different things. So this stamp ended up turning this drawer front into this. Isn't that cool? I absolutely love it. My husband hasn't warmed up to the idea, but let's just admit it. He doesn't really. So anyway, um, we're gonna use this on here. So um, there are a couple products I use that IOD does not carry, but I can tell you like what they are. And basically all it is, is I'm using some of my favorite paint. You can use whatever paint you want. Um, I the, the worst part of paint for me is picking a color. And I already started doing the buffet, in, or the vanity, in one color, and then I uh, chose a different color. And then I decided I was going to use some of these gorgeous transfers. And this one is so Victorian, I had to use it. So since this is a Victorian piece, I really want it to look like this stuff belongs on it. I didn't want to take a Victorian piece and turn it into something Southwest or turn it into something Art Deco. I, I really wanted it to stay true to its heritage. So what we're doing is I've got some paint in here. And I've got this is actually powder putty, okay? So putty, it's like a mixable putty. So it's a wood filler. Um, you can fill holes in walls like plaster in them. Um, and you can find all kinds of powdered putties. So I have this powdered putty. And I have equal parts powdered putty to equal parts um, paint just in a little cheese container, okay? 
Hi, Dallas. I hope everything's going well for you now. You guys had a rough week last week, didn't you? I have family and friends in Texas, and it was kind of rough. You know, we make fun of them and tease them because they can't handle winter. They really can't handle winter. They're just not equipped for it, so it's not funny anymore, is it? Okay, so what I do is I take my um, powder, and I'm going to mix in what I think was equal parts. So I'm going to put in three parts powder um, to my three parts paint. And then I'm just going to stir it. Now, the one thing I found out is that I was better off, and I don't know why I didn't think of that, to add in one part and mix it, and then add in another part and mix it, and, and slowly mix it in, kind of like you would, like, um, cornstarch to thicken something. Hi, John. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Donna. Hi, Judy. Hi, Cheryl. Um, from Pennsylvania. Nice. It's starting to warm up all over, so it's kind of nice because I kind of feel spring in the air even though the snow is still everywhere. Um, but our driveway is clear, so that's a plus. So you're going to want to get this to a paste consistency. Now, I don't have it at a paste consistency yet, and you see how much I'm having to stir this? Bulgaria, oh my goodness gracious, ideas everywhere. That's fabulous. Welcome. Uh, we're here in Little Illinois. Not really central, but western. I'd say western central right on the border actually of Iowa so the Mississippi rivers I actually teach right outside the door of the Mississippi River okay Robin Sandra Nikki Sue hello all right so see what I've got now it's kind of just a soupy consistency so that's telling me it's not a paste I need a little more so I'm going to add a little bit more in but I found through trial and error that adding a little at a time is best then overloading it, and then you can kind of control it. Also, the longer that it sits, the more it's gonna thicken. Um, I did read a little trick on the can um, where my dry putty came from. It said if you add a, just a splash of vinegar, I would say just a tiny, tiny bit, um, it will prolong your, your open time, which means that you will get some uh, time to work with it. But I didn't wanna prolong my open time because I want to stamp on it as soon as I can. So that's totally up to you. And you just kind of have to play it by ear as to how long it takes to dry. You'll probably tell, um, you'll feel it to the touch that it's just not as sticky anymore. It's drying up just a little and that's when it's perfect. Wow, I must have put way too much paint in here because I'm having to add a lot more paste. But that's the idea. You just usually equal to equal. Maybe I didn't do equal. Maybe I just dumped, I don't remember. But anyway, you just keep going until you get more of a paste consistency. So you think of spackle. That's what you're going for, spackle. Um, I bet you could use spackle for this. You know what, now that I think about it. Um, so I'm just gonna keep going until it, oh, now it's starting to paste up on me. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like a dough or a putty. All right, let's see who we have here. Does anyone have any questions on what we're doing? Hi, Denise from Southern California. Hi, Judy. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Anne. Thank you for coming, you guys. My name is Jenny. If you have any questions or you want to talk about something, IUD. All right, so we're getting there, but notice I'm having to mix quite a bit. And the idea of that is you want it smooth. You know, you want, like, you don't want lumps in your pancakes or lumps in your gravy. So you don't want lumps in your putty. You want it nice and smooth. Oh, it's really getting there. Look at that. See? I'll show you up close. So I'm getting my putty ready, and I'm trying to get all the bumps and bumbles. But you know what? I realized since my stamp that I'm using is so, like, all over pattern, it didn't matter that I had a, cute, a few little, like, I don't know, not so smooth places in my putty. All right, I'm going to use this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spread it on, like, frosting. Okay, so here's my piece, and I'm just using a little paint stir stick, one of those craft sticks, because then I can just throw it away when I'm done. And I laid out my putty on here, okay? So you see how that's going? And then honestly, all I do is move it back and forth, but you want to think like, okay, I'm a cake decorator. I want it to be even. I don't want divots, and I don't want um, highs and low places. Um, I got friends. No, I don't. Um, so anyway, um, you want to go along and oops, just kind of 
paste it on or spread it on like you would some frosting on a cake. So if you're a cake decorator, you got this. But I think you can do it. Max, I know you can do it. So I, I was a little weak on my edges when I did this before. So I'm making sure that my edges don't fall off. You know, like I don't want to rub it off. I want to keep it on those edges. Because I want them to be just as thick and designed as the center. So, yep, I want to make sure that I've got my edges nice in. And you get some open time with this. You can see it's not drying on me. It's still kind of liquidy, pasty. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the other cool thing. I can see that this edge needs more. So I'm going to pull a little more on there. So you just keep going along and it's kind of like a, just an eyeball in it kind of thing. And no, it doesn't have to be perfect. And yes, I'm going to have some drag marks in it, but that really doesn't matter with this. It's really cool. I love it. I was like, when I did it, I was like, whoa, that is so cool. Now I've got a lot of ideas flying around in my head. So I'm going to go along and I'm just going to scrape the sides. And then I'm going to look at it and make sure that I have the same amount on the sides that I do in the center. So I'm sorry if I'm not reading your comments right now. My eyeballs really need to be on this. Um, but I always go back. I love going back and reading comments because they make me better at what I do. If you guys have questions, I normally know I can answer most of those questions because they're usually some of the same questions. So I love to answer your questions. So please add a question there. I will always go back. You need to look and you'll get a notification and I will definitely answer your question. I don't think I've ever gotten a question unanswered. So that's the point. But when I do these alone, I kind of need someone to read those comments to me and I don't have anyone today. So everybody's working. All right, so I'm just working on getting those edges just as raised up as the rest of it. See, I've got a lot of play time with this. You might think, oh gosh, that looks hard. It's not hard at all. If you can frost a cake, you can do this, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do, just to give it a little bit of evenness, a little bit more, is I'm going to take um, like a putty knife. It's got a longer surface on it, and I'm just gonna go over it to kind of just even out. Can you see that? Just, I'm not even hardly pushing on it. I'm just kind of laying it down and, and pulling it over. Okay, so I've done that. Everything looks good. And now it just sits and hardens up. Okay, so while that's happening, I can show you what I'm going to do to the size of the drawers. So that's what it looks like. See, it's not perfect, but it'll be fine because look how detailed the stamp is there isn't gonna be much open space in there. So what kind of putty are you using? It's just a paint, it's a powdered putty. Um, they sell, uh, I was just talking about too, I think you could use joint compound or spackle. Um, anything that you can use to repair um, wood, wood holes. Um, you could probably just use wood filler, I would think, anything. I've also seen, um, I think Josie and Sally did a piece where they just used paint and they just put a thicker layer of paint on and they did that but I was afraid because mine was so dinged up I wasn't sure the paint would give me enough um, depth in my stamp to cover up those odd things okay so I put everything aside only messiness aside all right and then the next step this is what it will look like when it's done and then I just have to find my hole I've got my hole. I'll just have to find that and poke my thing through, but I'm gonna let this dry for a day or so so that it's nice and, um, uh, hi Donna. Yeah, you'll have to maybe go back and look a little bit, but I will try to repeat myself just a tiny bit of the steps as we go. Um, being a teacher of young children, I know sometimes I need to repeat steps. Um, yeah, you can find anything. It's just like a joint compound or this is a powdered putty. We're, we're really not here to sell you those kinds of things, so we're more, prone to stick to advertising our products. Um, not that we're trying to be rude or anything, it's just that this is our channel, IOD's channel, and that they want to use it for their own publicity. Okay, so what I've done is I've painted the sides, 
and I've painted just that top ridge. Now, this is something I would not recommend on every drawer. Many pieces of old furniture, the drawers stick pretty good. And it's because over the time the wood has expanded and contracted and expanded and contracted and think about the different temperatures and places that this furniture has come from. So you have to have a piece that has drawers that are pretty loose. Now if they're not pretty loose and you really want to do this to it, you can just sand it and sand it and sand it until it does work for you very loosely. It also depends on the mechanism or the drawer glide. So if the drawer glide is in the bottom, then you really don't have to worry about it. If it's on the sides, normally you can't do that. So with older furniture, you really have to take it out, look at it, make sure you have some space to work with on the sides so that it won't just rub off your transfer by opening and closing the drawer. That's not what we're going for. I have rarely find pieces that I can do this to. So um, anyway, yes, go ahead and find yourself a nice piece that has drawers that slide nicely. You can do this to just any old piece. It doesn't have to be uh, a beautiful Victorian vanity. It can be anything. All right, so what we're going to do is I want to let that dry so it hardens up just a bit. But look at this wallflower transfer. Let me show you the front. Isn't that gorgeous? No, I don't think you can get much more Victorian than that. And look at those colors. So what I did was I just painted the sides of my drawers the same color that I did my other. And then I'm going to take these pieces. And now that our transfers come in these packets, um, they've done something wonderful. If you have like a straight surface, um, look, the corners. There's corners for you. Um, there's there's all kinds of neat things like look at this little corner piece I could put that right on the edge and not lose any of it so yeah I, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on here I love these colors so now I need to decide um, I've done something similar the wood plank stamp yeah when I got ready to stamp it I brushed the stamp with cornstarch I never even thought of that good idea I just kind of had mine dry and that was that I have to che keep checking it to make sure it's pretty close it's almost ready so let's get our stamp picked out maybe, or our transfer picked out, and then we'll go from there. But I love peekaboos, um, which basically just means that you open the drawer and you get a fun surprise. Ooh, I like this one. Look at the gold in that. Isn't that pretty? So I really like this one. I'm gonna take this, and then I might just use that line to line it up right on the side of my drawer how I'm doing that. We have grid lines on ours, which makes life wonderful, because then I can just fold this over, and I give it a little crease, and I can see where my crease is, so I'm just going to cut right near that, a little bit more away from it, because I want a little excess on the edge. i got to continue to watch my pace, and then bring my drawer back down, now I have prepped this piece by, I painted it, there's two coats of paint, and then I put a matte water-based poly on there. And what that will do is it will help it to seal right to this. I'm gonna go way to the edge because I want that to be, when you open that drawer, even just a peekaboo, you're gonna see this lovely transfer popping out at you. All right, so that's where it's going. So I'm gonna rub it down with my hand just to get it to stay there a little bit and then I'm going to start rubbing it on. So if you've never seen anyone put a transfer on before it's really simple. When you open up your transfer pack it will have sheets. Then what you're going to do is you're going to try to get it all roped over on there so that it all sticks. And just in case it slides then you know it's not, it's not going to slide. Okay, because you've got it pretty much stuck down. Now, I might have to stop a second. Yeah, I think I can do this. I'm kind of feeling the tackiness of my putty over here. And then I'm just rubbing this on. And I'm getting myself a little air bubble. Can you see it? And I'm rubbing it on. And then what I'm going to do, which I think I don't have over with me, I'll have to grab some, is I have to sand off those edges so that it doesn't curl under. I don't want any of that underneath. If I do happen to get some of the transfer underneath, 
I don't want it there because that will grab when the drawer pulls in and out and I don't want any friction going on. And I think I'm going to not go up the corner edge here. Just do this right like this. Okay, so I see that there. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so you see how that's like hanging off the edge there? Wait a minute. See how, no, oh, yeah, yeah, there. That I will sand down, but I'm going to put that aside for now because I think our drawer is ready. Okay, so let's get it where you can see it. And I'm going to take, I always get a little nervous. <laughs> I guess if it doesn't work, I could scrape it off and do it again, right? So don't be as scared. All right, I feel like I didn't get it even, like enough putty, but we'll see how it works out. So I just centered it, and then you just press down. And I press down pretty good, but I don't move it around any, because I don't want it smudging. So press it down. And you can see, just still just a little tacky. Oh, I might not have waited long enough. I didn't. I wonder what I'm gonna do now. Oh, I didn't wait long enough. Here's what happens when you don't wait long enough. Okay, maybe it'll be nice to me. You know, I put it in front of the fan before. Maybe that's what I need to do because it made like a crust on it. So I think I'll do that. Look, I didn't even have to scrape it off and start over. Learn something new, make, making mistakes. That's what I always tell my students. Hey, making mistakes just means you're trying, number one, and sometimes your mistakes turn out to be beautiful, happy accidents, right? And you learn something new. I'm gonna put this in front of the fan. Actually, the fan blowing on me, but oh well. I can suffer from the cause, in the name of art, right? In the name of crafting. So I am gonna have to go put this in water just so that doesn't stick on there, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is finish up the sides of these drawers. I apologize. I didn't wait long enough. Now y'all need to know. Hey, you gotta wait a little longer. I think it has to have a crust on it. And mine didn't have a crust on it. Not enough. Alright. So I just used one of those, um, you know, like the scrunchies or the scrubbies you use on your dishes. <coughs> I used that to get that off of that stamp so that it's ready for next time. Okay. So excuse me I'm getting over like a chest cold now I can come back to my drawer and I can sand it down and I'll take off that excess I know I had sandpaper let me go grab it sorry I'm not prepared I thought I was luckily everything's just right here <coughs> I was gonna tell you funny I'm in my kitchen Doing what I love most, crafting. <laughs> I hate cooking. <laughs> so, I don't cook much. If I do, I'm not real happy about it. <coughs> I'm sorry. All right. So there, when they open their drawer, they're going to get a nice little surprise. <coughs> most people don't pull their drawers all the way out. But I could add something here, too. But I think what I'll do is I'll get the majority of the drawer covered. And then I'll go back with my pieces and maybe add some of that in. So wasn't that simple? All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I just line it up, and I love these grid lines for that, because it's not like you, you know when they started putting grid lines on wrapping paper? <coughs> it made all the difference in the world, didn't it? All right, so I'm gonna cut this a little bit bigger too, and I always like to cut right on a line so that I know it's straight, and maybe I wanna use that straight edge on another piece. So it's kind of like I'm prepping it for another piece. So here's more. Okay, questions. I missed a ton. I know I did. This is a hands-on project for sure. Okay, so I kind of like this one this way. Um, and I want it to be really colorful. That's why I picked the wallflower. Because it's beautiful and it's just bounding with color. So we'll put this one on this side. And then I might just add just a something 
a little more on the back just so it's fully done. One thing I noticed when I started doing furniture, and I do furniture for people, I don't do a whole, I do some for myself, but especially when I do it for someone, you don't, the worst feeling in the world is when you're there and you're loading up this piece of beautiful furniture that you've put this time into, and the people are excited and you're excited, and then they flip it up on the bottom, and you notice like, oh, I didn't quite get a spot there on the bottom of that foot, or oh, the back of the drawer isn't finished, or it just kind of makes you feel terrible. It's like, no, 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 I can't do that. I have to make sure that it looks good 360 degrees. So, so anyway, I just wanted to make my drawers pop. I don't want this to be full of color, this vanity, because, you know, your tastes change, your colors change over time, and, you know, you don't want, I mean, maybe you do. I like colorful things, but sometimes you just get tired of color, and then what? So, here you are, stuck with this bright gold whatever, and it was beautiful back when, but now you don't want it anymore. So, I like to do a little peekaboo color, or a peekaboo design on mine, so that it's not just boring, but yet it's it's got a little something, something on it too, okay? Any questions from anyone? Thank you. It is it is different. I've seen people do this. I've seen people use decoupage papers on the sides of the drawers as well. Um, I just like this wall flower, and it's so Victorian. I just, it, I knew it had to go on here because the piece, which I'll show you at the end, is very Victorian. We live in a Victorian town. We have a Victorian walk and everything, so we celebrate the Victorian heritage. So, isn't that cool? I love it. And look, it added so much color and happiness to that. Now, you see where I've got, I'll show you from this side. I've got that overhang. That's where I take just a piece of sandpaper and I come along and I get rid of that little edge. And there's not much there. You don't want that edge there and you don't want it run into the bottom because this is where this, the drawer glides. So I don't want that interrupting the gliding of my drawer. Now, I would never do this on a drawer that was tight because these will, and you'll, you'll see if a drawer's tight. If you see scratch marks and that on the sides, you'll know it's too tight to do that. So let's go back to this side. And you know what? I'm just using this one sheet. Maybe I just add this really pretty leaf at the end. Might as well. I don't know where else I'd add a leaf. It's at the back end, so I don't see too many people always seeing that back end, but it'll fill that in with some color and make it look like it belongs. So I'm going to stay away from the dovetailing and just add it right there. Um, I love dovetailing. I know dovetailing is important. It does tell the history of the piece. I've learned a lot about dovetailing, that certain types of dovetailing can give you the age or the era that the piece was created in. A lot of pieces that are handmade you can tell are from the 1800s because the dovetailing is not perfect. The dovetailing has like triangular um, dovetails, way more triangular than these are. These have a little bit more of a square shape that just comes in in the corners, see that? But you can see some will have a skinny little triangle and then they won't be perfect along. So you know they weren't made machine-wise, they were handmade. The other thing I learned is that Handmade furniture sometimes came from just craftsmen, not from big companies. So there might be like someone's signature. Um, my friend found one where it had a, a guy's signature written in pencil um, on the inside. So you know that kind of just took up the whole drawer. Now there's, it's all filled. Isn't that pretty? If I liked vanities, I just don't have room for one. I would definitely keep this. It's pretty. All right, so now I want to add something extra over here. So I'm going to, what should I add? I just want a little something in this corner. So I think I'm just going to add this little flower. And that's another reason for grid lines. They're awesome because do you see this flower? I don't want all of it. And I want to be able to use the rest of that. So I'm just going to cut around it and cut it off. Then when I go to use this piece again, it just looks like a leaf. 
okay? So this is the flower I want. Um, so I just really do need to just cut it out. I save all my pieces, and I'll show you how I save mine. I love these pads that the transfers come in now because it makes it so easy. Oh my gosh, it fits perfectly. It makes it so easy to save your pieces with the actual transfer cover and, and the rest of the pieces instead of having to save them separately because when they came in tubes, I mean, you could curl them up and put them in there, but the curling part became kind of a burden too because everything curled then. Okay, so to get this completely to stay on here, let's do it this way. Isn't that pretty? Here's the top. Oh, see? Now this is what I don't want. You see how that adhered to the bottom of my runner? That's what my drawer runs on. So be sure you know the architecture and the makings of your drawer and how it works. I don't want that there. I don't want anything to get in the way. I got a little paint too. I don't want anything to get in the way of my drawer working properly, okay? Even though it's an old piece, you can revive a piece um, to make sure that it doesn't stick. No one wants drawers they have to fight with all the time. You want them to be functional and usable. So I always clean up, even the bottom, you guys, I clean up the bottom. I want them to glide. And at the end, what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of wax you want to know what I found that I like to add on the bottoms of my drawers that glide? <clears throat> Do you know those wax melts that you get? They smell good. They're perfect for this. Those ones that come and there's like a pack of six and you pop it up and the little chunk comes out, the little square. I use them and I run them along here. And then not only does it make it glide really well, it smells wonderful. So we sell those in our store, and I've been using the ones in our store. So I open up that drawer, and every time it runs on that, I can smell that beautiful smell. So that's the drawer in a nutshell. Now, this front piece isn't done. I want to put another coat of paint on there just to make sure that it's all sealed and it's all in there. And I've got a little bit of some bumpy edges that no one really wants, so I'm going to tack them down a little bit or, you know, take them off just a tiny bit with my with my uh, sandpaper and then after I paint this I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna put it in the drawer and see how it works but I was thinking about using some white wax in there so that it would go down into those crevices and then just kind of make it pop a little bit it'll kind of be a tone on tone because this is just an ivory color um, this has a little bit of yellow to it that's why I'm really loving the yellow on the sides but when this drawer goes in it's gonna look gorgeous. And then I also use some um, hemp oil or salve on the inside just to rehydrate, because my pieces get completely clean. So then afterwards, they're a little drier. So we don't want any to force any more cracking going on. Let me see if you can see that. There's a little cracking going on in the front. I don't want any more cracking to happen to this lovely piece. So I take a little bit of hemp oil, or um, you could use some salves and, and get that all nice and, and re-moisturized, okay? So this is a piece, I fixed it. Um, oh, I got my putty piece down here. We forgot about that. Oh, I think it's ready now. My goodness, I almost forgot about it, you guys. <laughs> I get to talking. All right, so my putty has dried. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to press this down in here, and I don't want to push too hard or get it too squishy. And if I do, you've seen when I do, I either trawl over it again, or I can scrape it off and try again. But honestly, I think it'll be okay now. There you go. See how that turned out? So I got that pretty much. Now I noticed there wasn't much here, so I'm going to try to just add just a little more definition right here. Okay, and then go over on this side over here. I just take it and I flip it and then I put that right up next to it. And since this is such a busy pattern, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so let me see if I can find that. So anyway, I am not crazy about this part. So what I might do is add just a little bit more in there and pounce that down on that. The rest of it came out perfect. So you see how you can take like an old drawer that 
has like a lot of blemishes and maybe your veneer had to come off and the wood was horrible and you really wanted something special on it, this is what I'm doing. 